What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2013 Volvo XC90 P2. Today on the XC90, we're going to be covering how to replace your engine mounts. This is going to be applicable to all P2 models equipped with the 3.2 liter six cylinder. In front of us, we have a Hutchinson kit, which is available on fcpo.com. It includes everything you need to do this DIY. Uh, typically, these will last you about 100,000 miles or so. Depending on the kind of driving you do, sometimes they may last a little bit longer, and sometimes they may prematurely fail. The vehicle behind us has 150,000 miles on its original mount, so it's certainly due for a replacement. We recommend that you do all of them at once. Uh, you can purchase them individually on the site. However, the kit makes it a one-click buy option and includes all the mounts that you will need. Typically, you want to do them all at once as the rubber components start to degrade and fail over time. And if one starts to fail, then more than likely the next one's going to follow and then the next one, then the next one. So if you can, bang them out all at once. But before we get started on that, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this job. For this job, you're going to need a torque wrench that can handle anywhere from 50 newton meters all the way to 140 newton meters. We have a 3 8 and quarter inch drive ratchet as well. We have a 17 millimeter wrench. You can use a socket depending on what kind of tools you have, and this is going to be for the larger side engine mount, which we'll get to in a little while. We have a couple different extensions. Not all of them are pictured here, but we have some long ones, some short ones. We're going to need a combination of them to access some of the lower engine mount bolts. I'm using a CTA 8mm flexible driver. This is going to help me with the clamp on the intake tube. However, a flathead screwdriver will work as well. We have a small 13mm wrench, uh, this, again, for some of the tight spots that we're going to be in. And we also have a 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, an 18 millimeter socket, a 17 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter socket, and a 19 millimeter socket for our lug bolts. In addition to that, we have some electric tools to make our life a little bit easier, as well as a paint pen. And depending on where you're working today, if you're following along in the driveway or in the garage, you're going to need a floor jack that's free and a piece of wood. If you're on a lift, a screw jack will come in handy. Now with that, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are under the hood of the XC90. Uh, now, let me start by saying that this is going to be kind of a dancing around type of DIY. You have to remove one mount in order to be able to remove another mount. So we're going to be kind of taking a couple things apart and leaving them apart before we start reinstalling new parts. Um, just due to the fact that this engine is sitting on the subframe, it's kind of like cradled in. You know, they designed the body first and then they figure out how to cram the engine in after, which is why we have six mounts holding it in. Um, so we're going to start by accessing and removing and undoing as much of the items as we can on top on the engine bay side of things. And then we'll be dancing around and switching underneath and coming back under the top. So let me just show you what we're talking about. First things first, take this beauty cover off if your vehicle is still equipped with it. Set that to the side. We're going to work on removing this top mount up here by the expansion tank. Now you can choose to lift it up and move it out of the way if you'd like, but it really shouldn't bother us too much right now. Uh, we're going to start by removing this cover first. We have three 15 millimeter bolts that hold this top cover to our mount in place. And this one, the coolant line, which usually just pops up and you can tuck over to the side. I'll break this 15 on the side loose first. Then we can just zap the two 15s from the top. We have one more back here on the corner. Again, tucking under where the coolant line will sit closer to your first ignition coil. And now we can go ahead and pull this off. Slide this off our torque mount here and just set this to the side. If you want, you can also go ahead and just take your hardware and just put it right back in how it came out. This will help you stay organized as we're gonna be taking apart a bunch of different mounts today. and we'll just set this to the side. So just to compare, you can take a look at what 150,000 miles does to a mount like this. Obviously that's original. Here is our new Hutchinson mount. This is nice and fixed in here versus this is super loose. So anything like this can cause uh, weird vibration or a weird idle feel on the engine. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're thinking about doing mounts and it feels like your engine's really vibrating, especially under load or bucking around under load. This is a prime example of why that may be happening. So with that, we have one more bolt holding in this mount. We have one more 15 right here in the middle. We'll go ahead and just pull this directly out. Now, these mounts look pretty much the same, both on the inverse and outboard side. The only thing that changes is the 
mount has a small casting tab on the side facing the block, which our new Hutchinson mount has as well. If you flip it onto the other side, it does not have one. So, does it really matter which way you install it? I don't believe so. Everything's identical on both sides, but just to keep them one to one, we'll install our new mount with the casting tab uh, facing the block. So for now, we can go ahead and install this one. We're gonna really keep the other portion of it off. That's gonna allow us to rock the engine around while we get to the other mounts. So for that, we can just feed this one in and get our bolt started by hand. We're just gonna snug it up and then this gets torqued down to 50 Newton meters. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and pay mark it so that we remembered that it's been torqued down. Now that we have this one just kind of situated and hanging out for now, the next thing we're going to work on is accessing one of the top forward mounts. Next, we're going to pull off this feed to the air box. It's held in by two 10 millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and zap those out now. And we can pull this up. And it just simply keys in to our air box down below. I like to thread these back in so I don't lose them or misplace them. And set this portion out to the side. Next thing we have to disconnect from our air box is the intake pipe. We have a clamp up top here that we're just going to undo with a flathead screwdriver. And then we're going to hop underneath the car, take off our skid plate, which is going to be in the way of some of the other mounts. And then we'll take off the lower clamp so that we can pull this charge pipe off and out of our way. This will allow us access to the mount up front here. Okay. All right, underneath the car, we're going to work on getting the clamp uh, over at our throttle body to get the intake pipe fully out. That's going to give us some room to work with on the front engine mount here. And we're also going to be removing the skid plate, which will give us access to some of our other mounts. So let's get that pesky clamp out of the way first. A long flathead screwdriver will do the trick or an eight millimeter driver. These are one of the TTA flexible drivers, which we sell. Um, I love using these. These will get on the head of that clamp and I don't have to worry about getting the uh, screwdriver in there. So let's get that one out. Make sure when you reinstall this clamp that you clock it in a way where you can access it easily. Uh, I might clock it down a little bit more than this one is right now. All right. So that'll allow us to pull that off. And now let's get the skid shield off. All right, our skid plate or plastic shield is held on by six 10 millimeter bolts. So we're just gonna work our way around, zap them out. Just be mindful if your car leaks or Maybe there's debris uh, that can possibly fall out of there. You don't want your face right in front of the shield when you pull it down. Uh, wear some glasses or some goggles if you need to. All right, and then with that, we're just gonna gently bring it down and set it to the side. All right, this is gonna give us a better view of our engine from below. We have one of our mounts, which sits right here, which we're gonna be replacing. We have another one that sits right here. We have our forward one, which we're gonna work on next, uh, which sits through this bolt hole right here. And we have another pesky one that is tucked over here. And we have another one, which is somewhere up here on the top side of the subframe, which we'll get to later. But the next thing for us is gonna to be to continue working on this most forward mount. We have one 15 millimeter bolt that we have to access through the bottom hole here in the subframe. And then one thing we're gonna be doing, depending on how you're working or what you're following along like at home, we're gonna be using a floor jack and a piece of wood to kind of help raise and lower the engine as needed in order to get these mounts out and or just support the engine. You can use one of those braces that travels across the fenders and the strut towers. Uh, most people don't have that. I don't have one of those at home. So a floor jack and a piece of wood is gonna be our friend. We're gonna be supporting everything via the bottom of the block here, uh, the wood keeping us from crushing anything or poking a hole in anything. Um, so with that, we have one 13 millimeter bolt that goes into our mount. A uh, deep socket and an extension is gonna be your friend here. It's not much to see, unfortunately, but just make sure you get the socket on the head of the bolt properly. And then that's what this one looks like. And now we're gonna get our floor jack, we'll support the block, and then we will work on getting that charge pipe out so we can access the front part of our mount. Now we're gonna pull our pipe out. Let's pop it off from the throttle body down below. It's gonna be a bit tedious sometimes. All right, with this guy up here, sometimes you can undo this one first. Uh, you can loosen up the clamp or you can just twist it a little bit and it'll come out. This is just a silencer for the intake pipe. And we can go ahead and set this bad boy to the side. With our pipe out of our way, now we have a great direct view and reach of this front forward engine mount. So let's grab our ratchet, we'll grab our socket and we'll take those three bolts off the front. 
so we can pull the mount off and transfer it over to our bracket and drop it back in. We have three 13 millimeter bolts securing the mounting bracket, if you will, to the block. Uh, two are exposed right there in the light. The third one's a little bit more tucked behind that stud. So we're gonna go ahead and reach in there with our ratchet and just get those out. I'm just gonna break them free first and then we'll zap them out with the electric ratchet to make life a little bit quicker for us here. So these two longer bolts will be for the two right bolts as the mounting block's a little bit thicker. And we have one more on the inboard by the throttle body. All right, and now the whole assembly should come out. Should you want, you can also just remove the 15 millimeter nut from the stud and pull the engine mount out that way, but then you're gonna have to lift up the engine block even more. And here's our old mount out, and you can see, A, this thing's been completely trashed. The rubber's cracking, uh, the housing's literally deteriorating, falling apart. We'll grab our new one, and we'll just compare them side by side. Uh, but next thing on our list is gonna be a 15 millimeter nut up top, and that holds the mount to this mounting block. So let me grab our socket. We'll zap that off and then we'll clean this up before we reassemble. And here we go. You can see here through the filth, there's a little tab poking through. These mounts all have a locating tab. It also keeps it from spinning around when you're doing that center stud. Let me grab a new one so we can compare. So here's our nice new mount. You can see they still have the locating dowel. There's two of these in the kit. They both are the same front and back. We'll put them on the table and do a side by side so you can see how squished this one is compared to this one and then we'll clean up our bracket and reinstall. Before we go ahead and drop this mount back in, let's go ahead and mate it to our, our mounting plate. Again, it has a locating dowel on it. Pretty straightforward, they only go on one way. Then we have our 15 millimeter nut. We'll just snug it up with the impact. And then for those of you following along at home, the torque spec for this is 50 Newton meters. We can finalize it once it's back in the engine. So with that, we have our three bolts all cleaned up. Let's head back over and feed them in. We're gonna feed our mount back in. I have one bolt already going through the mounting plate and that's gonna be the top middle one, if you will, out of the three bolts that go against the block. That's just gonna help us get it started and line everything up. Just make sure you start all your hardware in by hand before you get in it to tighten it down or with an electric tool. Once we have a few threads going on all three, we'll snug them up with the electric ratchet and then we're gonna to torque all three of these 13 millimeter nuts down to 50 Newton meters. There's one. Then we're just gonna do the 15 down there with the gun just to snug it up a bit more. All right, and now with that, we can lower the block back down and finalize the 13 on the bottom. Now with that, we're gonna feed our 13 back underneath. Make sure you start this by hand as well. You don't wanna cross thread the bolt going back into the engine mount. The mount has a cone shape that keys into the uh, subframe itself, so it should line up no problem. Once you get a couple threads started, we're just gonna snug it up with the impact and then we'll torque it down to 50 Newton meters. Now with that, let's move on to the next mount. All right, my good people, next on our laundry list is gonna be the mount on the rear. This one looks identical to the one we just did up front. So you can see we have our screw jack supporting the transmission side of things with a piece of wood. For those of you following along at home, a floor jack with a piece of wood will do the same. Uh, we have a small eight millimeter bolt that holds some lines that protrudes through the subframe, which we're gonna have to remove first. It gets in the way of one of our 15 millimeter nuts that holds the bottom bracket of the mount in place. So this is supported. Let's hop in the back first. We'll take that little eight millimeter bolt out. We just need to back it out a bit and then we can get access to all three 15 millimeter nuts on the bottom. So we're gonna use an eight mil socket I have a small extension on it, and I'm using a quarter inch ratchet. It's nice and small, and it will fit right where I need it to to get this A-mill out. I just want to have enough room to get my socket on. Once I've achieved that, then I'm good to go. So let's take a quick look. Perfect. So we can leave that there, and we'll come back to it later. Now let's tackle the three 15 millimeter nuts. With those 15 millimeter nuts freed up, we have a couple 13s up top that hold the top portion of our mounting bracket to the transmission. So let's grab a ratchet and we'll work on getting those up next. The first 13 down below here, this one's pretty easy to get to. Just have a deep socket with an extension. All right, and now with that one situated, we have one more up top of here. 
Got my ratchet weaseled above the uh, subframe here. Just trying to break this bolt free. You probably use a ratcheting wrench in here too, maybe a small one, which we might switch to in a little bit if we need to. All right. So now with all our hardware removed, what I'm doing is I'm lowering the transmission a bit. I need to clear the bracket up top. Uh, this ear here on the trans on the top side uh, is in my way of removing the top bracket, so I need to kind of jump it over if that makes sense. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm lowering the trans a bit. That should give me some wiggle room. So right now what I'm doing is I'm prying this mount from the back just to kind of swing it towards the front a little bit. And we're gonna get a 15 on a swivel with a long extension, something like that. And we're just gonna try to zap off that bottom knot. That way we split this bracket in two. My good people, you're gonna have to forgive me. We have one more pesky bolt holding the top portion of this mount in place. I'm gonna give you the best shot possible. What I'm using, um, what I'm using here is a long extension uh, with a 13 millimeter socket. And we're just going over the, uh, the axle here and the transmission to get to that last one. So let's get it. All right, that felt promising. Now that we have that out, we're gonna lift up our motor using our screw jack or your floor jack for those of you following along at home. Now we have that free. We have a better chance at manipulating our mount. We have two eight millimeter bolts that secure this heat shield onto our mount. If we pull those off, that'll give us a little bit more room to get the mount off itself. Out is our shield and two slots for the two eight millimeter bolts. Pretty straightforward, set this to the side. Uh, before, when it was in there without anything being removed, there's really no way to get a wrench or a socket on these little eight millimeter bolts. So once you have it moving around, then you can get a tool on it and get that little guy out. And now we should have room to wiggle this mount out with the bracket on top of it still. There we go. So to give you a better view of what the heck we were doing on there, my good people, you had the shield on here originally, which the shield doesn't really get in the way of much. Just to give you that view again, this was sitting in here like that. We had the bottom two 13s that we took out first, and then there's another top 13. The best way to describe this, since you can't really see it, is literally run your hands across the top and just reach for the first bolt that you feel. And that's gonna be the last one. That's what was causing this to pivot. So, with this, finally, we have one more 13 millimeter bolt here, which we're gonna zap out. We're just gonna use our impact gun to get it out. And when we install our new mount, we wanna make sure that we're mindful of the locating tab that's gonna sit on the bottom portion of our bracket. Again, that's the one that goes over the steering rack. And that tab is gonna be facing towards the back of the vehicle. That's gonna sit inside like that. So you wanna make sure that your tab is facing back when you install your new mount. Thank you, sir. So for now, we're just gonna join the two pieces together, get the thread started. And now at this point, this is gonna sit something like that. So we wanna make sure this dowel is facing the back. And then for those of you that want to torque it down, it's going to be 50 Newton meters. We're just going to use the old Milwaukee here today to snug it up nice and tight. That should be more than fine enough. Double check our orientation here. That looks beautiful. That looks beautiful. And just to give you a better view, here's the back side of the mount. Here's our locating dowel. So when this all goes back together, these two will sit in like this. Perfect harmony. So now the fun part is gonna to be to get these back in there. I recommend you use these two bottom bolts to like uh, to locate the bracket where it's gonna sit first, and then you can fight the uh, third bolt. Uh, I'm just gonna use one for now. I'm gonna get the third bolt, or the most annoying bolt started by hand. I'm gonna pull this one back out, and I'm gonna allow the whole bracket to pivot 
That way we have the most room to work with when we go to reinstall this bottom bracket. So let's get that going now. First we're gonna get this mount and bracket back in and we're gonna put our shield back on. Don't forget about the shield. Otherwise you'll have a tough time putting it back on later. And the shield is important. It's there to protect the mount from heat coming off of the header. Uh, without the shield, it would degrade much, much quicker and wouldn't last as long. All right, eight mil socket. I'm gonna go ahead and just snug them up. Now we can go ahead and feed the mount back up against the transmission. All right, so right now I'm just lowering the engine and trans down a bit. I'm gonna get this top mount bracket situated uh, using one of the bottom bolts, or whichever one's easier for you to get to, to use as a alignment dowel, if you will. All right, all I want is a couple threads. This will allow me some play, but it will also allow me to get the next bolt up top started. Again, just looking for a couple threads uh, so we can line up the one that we cannot see, the third one up top. And then we'll pull these two back out to give us some wiggle room. With the mount up top, we removed the two bottom bolts. So now we have a little bit of play. That top one's just loosely threaded in. Now we're gonna work on feeding our bottom bracket on and we're gonna work on getting our 15 millimeter nut started so that we can tighten this back up onto the mount. Now we're just gonna take our 15 millimeter nut and get that started by hand. Now, we need to tighten that 15 millimeter nut up to 50 Newton meters if possible, which I don't have too high hopes for. So we're gonna do our best at getting a extension between the subframe or the backside of the subframe like so. So we can slip our socket in up top here and get that on our 15. This is a socket that has a little bit of a swivel head to it. So I'll help with some of the angles that we're experiencing. We're just gonna snug it up with the electric ratchet. Okay. And then we'll throw a torque wrench on it just for ha ha, see how close we get. All right. And now that we have the mount situated to our bracket once more, we can take our two 13 millimeter bolts that we pulled out and feed those back in. Make sure everything lines up with the transmission side of things. Starting with the most annoying and difficult bolt to get to up top. Again, all three of these get torqued down to 50 Newton meters. All right, with that top one tightened up, we can move over to the, a little bit easier to reach, next bottom two. So that one we just made snug. Now we're gonna move on to the bottom one, which will snug up with the electric ratchet. And then we should be able to get a torque wrench on this one. Oh, no problem. And now with that, we can line up the three bottom studs and feed those back through the subframe. Now we're just gonna go ahead and lower our trans jack or our screw jack, or if you're following along at home, your floor jack. We're just lining up the, the studs, making sure they go in. And now we can get all three 15 millimeter nuts started back up. We're just gonna snug them up with the electric impact and then we'll torque them down to 50 Newton meters. All right, now we have all three 15 millimeter nuts secured. Don't forget to snug up your eight millimeter bolt back up on the back that holds the lines in place. Once we do that, we're gonna move back to the middle here. We'll use the screw jack seal to support everything and we'll tackle this next torque rod arm. First, we're gonna remove this plastic grommet from our mount that keeps this harness to our starter in place. Just use a small flathead or a trim removal tool, something to pop it down with. And we have two 18 millimeter bolts up front on the subframe side of things. These are nuts. Once we get those two nuts undone, we can do the two bolts on the other end. These are gonna be two 13s. This thing is wasted and it's covered in a lot of oil, which is not gonna help the rubber. If anything, it'll make it degrade faster, which we did in another DIY coming to you soon, where we replace the water pump and the decoupler seal on the alternator and all that weird, funky, good stuff and the belts, of course, so stay tuned for that. Now we're gonna feed our new mount in, starting with feeding the subframe bolt 
our studs through the subframe first. And we're just gonna snug those up. And we can snug up the 18 millimeter nuts. And now we're gonna torque the 18 millimeter nuts down to 110 Newton meters. And we're gonna do these back 13s to 80 Newton meters. All right, we'll mark those two. And with all those torqued down, we can reinstall our grommet once more for our power cable here. And now we can go ahead and relocate our screw jack over to the right a bit, to the passenger side of things, so we can tackle the next uh, uh, torque mount. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, we have our screw jack situated up top, or down below here with us, holding our engine up top. We have two 15s to remove first. All right, with those two out, we can remove this bracket. Remember the connecting part goes up top, the Volvo logo is right side up. With that, we have two more 15s holding our mount onto our subframe. We're just gonna go ahead and install it the same way we took it out. Uh, they look pretty much the same uh, both ways. So there's really no, no real wrong way to install this, this old mount. So with that, let's go ahead and grab our new one, feed that into place. All right, then we'll snug those up and torque them down to 80 Newton meters. Now we can reinstall our bracket once more. Again, the attached nuts are on the back side. Volvo logo up, or right side up. Snug them up with the impact, and then we'll torque them down. All right, and with that, the next mount is gonna be the one that sits above our subframe. Uh, for that, we're gonna have to take the passenger wheel off, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna keep the screw jack here because we're gonna use it to raise and lower everything. So let's get to it. We have five 19 millimeter lug bolts to remove. Go ahead and zap those out. Now we have our side engine mount here. You can remove this wheel liner if you'd like. We're just gonna fold it back. It's not really in our way. We have four 13 millimeter bolts and two 17s that go into the subframe holding us on. So we're gonna start by breaking free the 17s at the bottom. We already have our screw jack situated under the engine so that we can take any load off of the uh, mounts once those are out. And then we'll zap out the ones on the side. Okay, we'll get that out once we get the mount out. Now let's do the one on the inboard. This one sits under the axle, a little bit hard to get to. All right, 10 days later. This other side comes out. We're gonna have to clean up this bolt a lot. They had a ton of corrosion making it impossible to take out at small increments. And now that leaves us with four 13s up front. And now with this, I'm just gonna raise the block a bit. We're gonna keep that fourth bolt in there. There we go. And we can pull this old pad mount out and get our new one installed. Right, we have our new pad mount. I'm gonna go ahead and get that situated into place. Also, don't forget, we're gonna insert the inboard 17 with it, as it's kinda hard to get that one out. We'll get the other 313 started by hand first. And we're just gonna snug, snug them in we're first with the electric ratchet. And we're gonna torque these down to 50 Newton meters. And then we can get the block lower down a bit, making sure that two, our two 17s line up at the subframe and start by hand. All right, let's snug that one up first, same way we took it out. We can remove our floor jack or screw jack, whatever you're using to support the block. Once you have both of your 17 started up. These get torqued to 80 Newton meters. Uh, perhaps a crow's foot would come in handy for tonight. We're just gonna snug them up really good using the old calibrated wrist. All right, that one's good. Now we gotta do the one by the axle. All right, that's nice and snug, my good people. We can throw our wheel back on. We're gonna snug all five of these lugs up against the hub. Then we're gonna drop the car down and torque all five in a crisscross pattern to 140 Newton meters. All right, now that our wheel is all torqued up, we're gonna wrap this DIY up by reinstalling our intake tube. We'll, we'll situate the clamp at the bottom, reinstall our splash shield, and then we'll button up everything up top. So let's do that now. We're gonna feed our intake pipe back on and we're just gonna kinda get it roughly situated with our throttle body down below. You can get it to pop on by wiggling it a bit, which we just did. Beautiful, 
And we can go ahead and situate our, t our tube up here as well. That went on nice. All right, that's on there now. I'll tighten this clamp up once we come back up to install our ducting, but for now, let's clamp underneath and tighten up our hose clamp. Now we're gonna go ahead and just position our clamp where it's best for us. And we're gonna hold it with the back of our hand. And I'm gonna use that CTA eight mil driver to tighten up the clamp. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our splash shield, which is held in by six 10 millimeter nuts. We're just gonna zap them in gently with the gun all around. All right, my good people. With that, the bottom of the car is situated. Now we can head back up top, finalize our clamps, our ducting, our last engine mount, and wrap up this DIY. Now we're just gonna tighten down our hose clamp for our intake boot once we know it's situated properly all the way down. And we can reinstall our ducting once more. First, we're gonna zap out our two 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna feed this in. Make sure our ducting keys into our air box. Beautiful. And then we can get our two tents back on. And now we can finish reinstalling the top portion of our mount here. Remember I left all the hardware with it so we knew where everything went. Nothing was moved about. All right, I'm gonna start with the 15 on the side. Just feed that in first. Make sure it goes through our mount and starts threading on the other side. And with that one situated, we're gonna start the other three up top by hand. Then we're just gonna snug them up with the impact and then we'll torque them down. 15 millimeter socket, just to snug them up. And last but not least, we have our beauty cover up top. And that, my good people, is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Uh, definitely a little bit of a pain on the butt doing all six engine mounts on this 3.2. Uh, the hardest ones being the one in the far back driver's corner. And then just a little bit hard would be the front one by the electric fan. But that back one, we definitely spent a little bit of time on it. So if you're taking a lot of time on it back at home, do not fret, do not stress, because it took me a while as well. With that, my good people, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make, we make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.